Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. Callum, there's two kinds of people in this world, aren't there? There's your early birds and your night owls. Yeah, it can really be separated, can't it? Yeah, truly. Now, I would consider myself a night owl, which doesn't entirely suit working on a brekkie show, uh, but it does mean I do get pretty sleepy in the afternoons. What do you reckon you are? Oh, night owl, for sure. Yeah, night yeah owl, that yeah. first six months of breakfast, uh, when we got the breakfast gig... <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I, I just, couldn't make yeah, it to three o'clock. It, it was like, literally, we would finish the show, go home, and every day I would nap at about three. It really yeah. took it out of me. Yeah. So I've only just gotten used to it, to it be was, honest. It was like I was uh, heading into retirement, how early I was taking naps. <laughs> just uh, parents walking in, seeing on a recliner, legs up, yeah. you know, passed out. It really was retirement home vibes, having your meals around 5pm. But I'm also, I'm a really good sleeper. Like, if sleeping was an Olympic sport, I'd, be, I'd hold multiple gold medals. I would oh. I would be like the Stephen Bradbury of sleeping, but it wouldn't be a fluke. Yeah, be very intentional. Yeah, those people that can just sleep standing up or in any position, you know. See, I reckon, I reckon I could fall asleep standing up. I nearly have fallen asleep in the shower once standing up. I could fall asleep absolutely anywhere. There was a time we went to New Zealand together. I slept through an earthquake that you said was pretty mental. It was pretty bad. I've never experienced an earthquake before and, you know, one of those New Zealand ones that uh, rocked the bed a little bit and I looked over and you were dead asleep. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I am going to open up the phones in a minute to find out where you've had a kip, Adelaide. When did you sleep last night? Because we were recently told a bit of a story about this real estate agent here in Adelaide. Yeah. Uh, and we won't name any names or any businesses or anything, no. but he fell asleep in a pretty precarious situation. Yeah, he was doing an open house, and I guess as a real estate a uh, agent, uh, you set up everything before, you get yeah. everything ready, you make sure the house is all nice before you know the open house and all the people start you know going through. And it's a big day, isn't it, doing an open house? Like it's a, it's a good few hours out of your day where you're just showing around people in this house. So yeah. you have to be prepared. You have to make sure, you know, you've had a good night's rest, you, you, you've eaten properly. Yeah, yeah. And I'm pretty sure from what I know about this guy that he went out the night before <laughs> and, and he had a big one. And then he was playing catch up the next day, sets up the house, and then apparently he ordered delivery food. He got a AB. Which yeah. really does scream as well that he definitely had a big night. And the also one before. a classic meal that uh, has quite the pungent smell oh, to it. Definitely, like, definitely. That garlic is going to be sticking to the walls. <laughs> Literally. But the story goes, apparently he's left the door unlocked for the open house. Everyone's got the set times. All the people start walking through. Man's fallen asleep on the recliner, legs up, A, B, in lap. <laughs> you know, tzatziki and barbecue sauce on the face and he's asleep. This is the man that's meant to be selling you the house. I yeah. guess, really, he is doing a testament to how comfy the house is yeah. and how, you know, settling it is that you could just fall asleep there at any time. You could fall asleep in your bed or in the recliner. <laughs> <laughs> but we do want to open up the phone lines here, Adelaide. Where did you fall asleep? Was it on a was it on a walk back on a night out in town? Was mm. it in a complete stranger's house? It could be absolutely anywhere. We want to find out. So many people are getting involved at the moment. Yeah, we've got a few on the text line. Someone here said, I've fallen asleep in various places. My wife used to get mad at me, even doing the deed, and she'd be like, are you snoring? Oh, God. Mm, lucky girl. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Another text student here, fell asleep in a bush outside of childcare in Marion. Woke up to the sunrise, walked to the Marion shops, caught the M44 back to my place in Golden Grove. Jeez. Happy the, days. The next morning bus is already gruelling enough, let alone that you slept in a bush. Yeah, no, nah, it's not, not a great place to fall asleep. Hey, we've got uh, Red from Aldinga on the line. Red, good morning, mate. Where'd you fall asleep? Hey, boys. Yeah, used to work in Roxby, and on the last night shift, we'd take it pretty easy to try to get a nap in. Yeah. So I'd go to the old boneyard out the back there in the Utes and have a nap in the tray. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think uh, that does sound insane, but both me and Tom's eyes lit up. What is the boneyard? 
I was just where the old utes were because the water's pretty salty up there, so the utes just come to die pretty much. And right. Yeah, there's heaps of places to have a nap. So right. it was a bit of a game between me and the boss. He always threatened if he caught me, I'd be in trouble. But he walked one past me one night and never saw me. So it's not called the Boneyard because you had uh, some company in the back of the ute. Oh, that would have been nice. <laughs> <laughs> Set up a swag. Good on you, Red. Hey, let's go to Sarah in Flagstaff Hill. Sarah, good morning. Where did you fall asleep? <laughs> uh, good morning. I actually fell asleep in my Pilates class. Pilates? Uh, Jeez, that's pretty tough too, Pilates. How would you manage to fall yeah, asleep? Yeah, I fell my Pilates. Pilates, yeah. Because mm, I was going to say that Pilates really... Yeah, it, it blew my mind when someone said Pilates isn't the same as yoga and it's actually quite intense. Yeah, it is pretty intense. Uh, did you? Did anyone wake you up, Sarah, or did you just sleep through the class and they got you at the end? <laughs> Yeah, man, no, they found me and woke me up gently. That was very polite. <laughs> that's, one you want, that's one you want your money back, though, isn't it? Yeah. If you're falling asleep in Pilates, yeah, you're like, yeah, the, the instructor's not doing it right. <laughs> Good on you, Sarah. Hey, we've got Faith also in Flagstaff. Heal Faith, where'd you fall asleep? Hi, you guys. Hey. I fell asleep on a horse. A horse? On a horse? Wow. Was this a yeah. is it, smooth is, ride? Is it your horse or was it one of those tours that you pay to do? No, no. So I used to work it, with race horses and we used to start at 4.30 in the morning. But we used to get in from the club at 2.30. Jeez. So by the time you'd ridden your four, fifth horse, they just used to walk round in a ring. And yeah, I just fell asleep while I was just walking round on the horse. Jeez. Quite a nice motor to fall asleep. Yeah. yeah Not okay. for long. But yeah, but yeah, fell asleep on a horse. Have you, how many times have you fallen asleep on a horse? Um, there was a few times. There's a few. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good there was on a you, few Faith. Times, yeah. <laughs> I wish I could fall asleep on a horse. That sounds like uh, instead of playing rain sounds at night yeah. over my speaker, I could just have a horse. I'd feel pretty confident, to be fair. I'd be like, yeah, the horse knows what it's doing. It'll yeah, just trot around for a little bit, you know, <laughs> shake me off when it needs. Hey, Phoenix in Blair Athol, let's wrap it up. Where'd you fall asleep? Alrighty. Um, so it was about three o'clock in the morning. Yep. I was twenty dollars short of my taxi. Yep. Got out, got to walk home, saw a little park in a human sized dome hammock. Oh. Yeah. I took a nap and uh, woke up the next morning at eight thirty to an Ulsh worker telling me I was in a primary school and that really? I needed to get out. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Jeez. So you, you've spotted the hammock on your on your walk home and uh, decided this would be a good spot for a little kip, and it was a well, primary school. It was a primary school, but I guarantee you, if you saw that hammock, it it looked like a Sleeping Beauty, and yeah. I was a Sleeping Beauty. I mean, Phoenix was a was it a school day or was it the weekend? You know, was was no, there kids this was inbound? In holiday, so. It okay. Was holiday care, and uh, that's why the old worker right. came and you know woke me up from my days and said there's going to be some kids here in about ten minutes. You need to get out. At least it was a Osh worker and not a couple kids like poking you with a, <laughs> a stick, stick or something. Yeah. Is he dead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, if you were a mouse and someone were to try and trap you, what mm. would the equivalent of cheese be? Uh, for me personally, yeah, yeah. oh geez, uh, pub sesh. Literally, yeah. That's exactly what I was gonna say for myself. <laughs> and someone tried to entice me with that. Better not be broadcasting yeah. that. <laughs> Start getting messages. Hey, come to this unknown address yeah, for a yeah. pub sesh. <laughs> yeah, no worries. I'll Might be have there. To sniff it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Give now, me ten. Now people know our kryptonite. <laughs> If it wasn't addressed already on the show, that we do like to socialise and, you know, head out to the pub. But someone has used that against me to get me to do something I didn't realise. Uh, so I'm moving in, hopefully, with a friend, Tamara, uh, into her rental property. Yeah. And uh, she pretty much sent me a message saying, hey, do you want to come over for drinks? Oh, yeah? And do you want to... Housewarming go... sort of vibe. Oh, a little bit. Like, I'm not in there properly yet. I still have to do the application and everything but yeah. um, and have it, like, processed. But she said, let's go to the pub, let's do drinks. And this was on Monday. And I thought, yeah, great. Like, I'm in the city anyway. It's pretty close. So I'll just yeah. walk down and do that. Easy. I get there. And in the meantime, she's also tried to entice me in the messages, weirdly. Okay. We are just friends, but she's thrown a few X's in the messages. It's been like, come over for drinks, XX. And I was like, this is bizarrely odd. Why is that odd? Well, it's odd for her. It's is odd it? for her. Yeah, 100%. I don't think so. She's the type of girl that if you went to hug her, she would punch you in the stomach and tell you to <laughs> F off. 
And I've tried to send exes to her before as well, and once again has told me to f off. See, so uh, the every exes time are bizarre. I've fallen into messaging Tamara, there's been exes and O's. Yeah, well, it's a it's, different relationship. It's just then. A friendly. It's just friendly nah, towards me. Nah, she's, she's never tried to punch me in the stomach whenever I've hugged her. her. <laughs> don't trust her. I don't trust her one bit. The exes are a strategy. 100%. Every time she's asked me to go to the pub, it's been the pub. <laughs> But I've, I've gone there. I've gone to the house, right? She's yeah. not even home. Right. Okay. <laughs> She's not even home. One, her roommate's home. So I just have small talk with her roommate while I sat in the lounge room waiting for her to come home. <laughs> and then eventually about half an hour, she strolls through. Half and an hour? Half an hour later, I had to wait there. Yeah, right. Were you early or? No, I was on dead time, according yeah. to the messages with the exes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, lured me in. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm sitting there, and pretty well, uh, she strolls on through, and she says, "Hey, I uh, I invited you under false pretenses. I should let you know right. that." And I said, "What do you mean?" And she said, "I would really like you to come to Bunnings and get some plants." I was like, "All right." And then she's like, "Then we'll plant them, and then also we'll do some hedge trimming, and then we'll <laughs> cut the vines out the back." Oh, and you see those leaves out there? Those kilos upon kilos of leaves. We have to clean that up. So I've been invited over for labour. Yeah, right. Okay. With no sign so of a just... drink apart from the solo that was in the fridge <laughs> that I had to drink out of <laughs> first because I did so much labour in the sun. <laughs> She's come trimming. out with major lemonade. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the pub. What, what, what in her thought that you would be a good gardener as well? Like, Have you ever expressed any interest in gardening before? I've never said anything about gardening. I think it's just because I'm moving in there that she yeah. you know, expects the fruits of my labour. But yeah, so... <laughs> Did that, and uh, I'd have to say the circumstance ended with a hell of a lot of mozzie bites. Oh, no. Uh, sweat. But, yeah, sweat. Dirt. Tears. Tears. <laughs> blood. Yeah, a little bit of blood. Yeah, just a little bit. <laughs> Nothing crazy. No, but, no, no. Yeah, yeah, just Chipped a, a fingernail. Yeah, yeah just, just a little bit. Not, not a bit too much blood, though. But, uh, yeah, and uh, no sign of the pub at all. Just uh, Didn't even the, go to the pub didn't after. Didn't even go to the pub. She uh, lured me in, like I said, a mouse to cheese, and yeah. uh, I haven't seen her since. <laughs> oh, have you even heard from her? <laughs> Who knows if the application's gone through? It's probably all a ruse to do a gardening. Yeah. I'm not even moving in. You're back there next week. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tom, getting married is a huge commitment to somebody, and it's probably the moment you choose to be a part of someone else's dumb decisions. Mm, Maybe. Yeah, they become your dumb decisions. Yeah, exactly right. You're, you're by association, by the bound of marriage yeah. that, you know... It's like being you... an accomplice to a crime. Exactly right. You're there. You're yeah. a part of this now. When, when people judge your husband or your wife, you know, you're They're attached, judging both of you. You're attached to that. Yeah. So, you know, you have to be pretty on the ball and make sure things don't go too astray. Yeah, or stay indoors. Mm, yeah, but this uh, this has happened to one of our mates, Pete. Uh, he's probably he's getting married soon, mm -hmm. and he had his Bucks show on the weekend, but he's probably made one of the stupidest decisions that if I were his fiance, I would look at him and be like, geez. What have I done? Yeah, this is... <laughs> <laughs> this oh, guy, God. this guy is a maniac. Yeah, right. You know? What's he done? So he's done his impromptu bucks night. A bunch of his mates have invited him out, and they've gone out for drinks. They've gone out to town, done the usual stuff. Yeah, and then they've gone back to his place for a few more drinks at night time. Afters. Yeah, yep. exactly right. And uh, he has thought, geez, you know, I want to flex my juggling skills. The man I've never known to have juggled ever. I didn't, seem... I didn't realize he could juggle either. He no. doesn't seem like a guy that would juggle or like you know sit down to learn how to juggle either. Nah. <laughs> like, you know, you look at some people you're like, I, like, I can't juggle. No. Nah. I, I just don't think... I've tried to juggle. I mean... Yeah, I can't do it. Two people in this world, jugglers and non-jugglers, and you can sort of tell who, who is and who isn't. Yeah, yeah. But uh, he's definitely not one that I would say is that skillful at it, I'd assume. But he's tried to juggle some knives. Knives? Knives. So he's hopped in the kitchen, grabbed a bunch of butcher's knives, and he's thought, geez, yeah, I'll give this a go. I'll try juggling them. What the hell? <laughs> what are they, like are they have they got the covers on them or anything? No, nah, like, no, nah, nah, pure blades. Jesus. At the moment, at this point as well, because I what are his up, mates doing? Well, like well, at, I, at the I, afters, I, who's who's allowed this to go on? Yeah, yeah. Who are you? Surely someone's with? there. Like, don't do it, mate. Yeah, yeah. Don't do it. <laughs> Use some, use some like, hacky sacks instead. I feel like it would be one of those cases that there'd be a lot of people saying, don't do it, don't do it, but a lot of people would want to see it. You'd be at that point where you think, yeah, I kind of want to see what happens here if he can pull it off. But he has gone and done it and copped one of the knives in the stomach. 
and oh my not god, a, not a terrible, uh, not a terrible car. Like it's fairly small, but it's reasonably deep. But I was on the phone to him, and he didn't elaborate too much. So I wanted to. In the in the vein of talking about uh, dumb things your partners do, wanted to talk to his uh, soon to be wife Christine and uh, get the goss on what actually happened. Here's how it went. Now, Christine, uh, we were talking about it's probably one of the stupid things one of your partners could do. Uh, your hubby Pete, he was juggling some knives and accidentally cop one to the stomach, but. There was something a little bit more outrageous that he did afterwards when that happened. Can you explain? When he was juggling the knife, um, obviously he didn't catch it. He was also sitting down when he did it. Then he proceeded to wanted to see how deep it was, so he grabbed his car keys and decided to stick that in there. Jeez. Um, Chris. (laughs) Hey, Christine, I mean, we've got to rewind a little bit to the juggling knives. What was going through it? Why was he juggling knives in the first place? No. They just wanted to revisit the old days of doing clown college, you know, try the <laughs> oh, juggling. Absolutely. I think it's crazy, Christine, because I, I vaguely heard about this story, but I think one of the more interesting aspects, even beside the trying to see how deep it is with the keys, the fact that he was sitting down. He didn't want to stand up. I feel like sitting down is a big warning sign for when you're juggling knives. It can't go well. Yeah, I know. You wouldn't have much balance in that. I was literally asleep when this happened. What is going through his mind? I don't know. Was it deep? It was a couple of mil deep, actually. It was fairly Ooh, deep. Jesus. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but by the time I'd actually woken up, it was too late to really do much about it. It's still open, though. Yeah. So oh. we'll he hasn't got to sit up. <laughs> no. No. He won't do the doctors. Thank you so it? much for your time this morning and uh, <laughs> for sharing that, uh, well, I wouldn't say incredible story, but what that story. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Yeah, so that's uh, that's coming from the fiance there. She doesn't even know what's going on. I think one of the craziest parts of that as well, the 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 bit where uh, she says it's still open, the wound is still open. The man is going around like uh, yeah. like a zombie with uh, his yeah. flesh hanging out, yeah. still going to work every day, every day job. No white t-shirts. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> We want to open up the phone lines here, Adelaide. What dumb thing did your partner do? I don't think there's anyone that can top that right now. I'd like to see someone top it. I mean, you know, there's plenty of dumb things someone would do on a buck side. There's like 15 dumb things going on in just that (laughs) one blanket dumb thing of juggling knives. We got Hayden from Adelaide on the line. Hayden, mate, good morning. How are you? Oh, we've lost Hayden. Hayden's gone. (laughs) Jeez. (laughs) <laughs> yes. Well, uh, Hayden basically was saying, uh, asking the same questions over and over and over. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Different vein to getting a knife in the stomach. I feel like yeah. I, I feel like out of the two, I would rather uh, you know marry Hayden's uh, situation. Yeah. No. Not great. Hey, we've also got May from Kilburn on the line. May, what dumb things does your partner do? Hey guys, uh, this isn't what uh, dumb things they do, but it's something uh, dumb he said that I've never gotten over. Yeah. Okay. So um. We were looking up, you know, having a romantic moment, looking up at the sky, and he said, wow, there's so much we don't know about the universe, like where the stars go during the day. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What'd you tell him? I just, like, walked away. Yeah, you walked away. Didn't <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't come oh, up yeah. with some elaborate lie? Yeah, like, oh, yeah you... I sh- I, looking back, I should have, but yeah. no, no, I just couldn't deal with his dumbness. They all hitch a ride, you know, go on the other side of the moon and, uh, you know, hide around yeah. there for a little bit. Yeah, okay. I was like, not the astronomy expert or anything. Uh, does he Does he no. still not know what happens to stars during the daytime? I think he might have Googled it, um, but yeah. no, I'm not with him for his brains, I can tell you that. I would, love, uh, I would love the idea of him Googling it and looking at the simple answer and being like, crap, <laughs> just knowing you made, you really ruined that romantic situation. You could have had it all. Hey, <laughs> just kept your mouth shut. Yesterday, I issued you a little bit of homework on the show, mm. and it was off this article from the website Catster. Yeah. And it's a web this is a website all about cats, you know. It tells you what kind of what good what is good cat food, I guess. Uh and there's uh, different articles about cat behavior and there's uh, a whole a whole section just dedicated to kittens as well. Right, yeah, it just seems like a whole website, you know, all cat dedicated how to look mm. after them, just a bit of a cat hub. Yeah, cat hub, exactly right. That's what cats is all about. Yeah. And I found this article in the cat behavior section. 
What is a cat's IQ, vet-approved facts, and how to test feline intelligence? Yes. And basically, they go in to the article and say there's no real way to test a cat's IQ like a human because they can't answer a lot of the questions. But there is a way to test a little bit of their intelligence by grabbing their favourite toy and a cardboard box. And what you've got to do is show them their favourite toy and then hide it either behind the box or under the box. Yep. Now, if they go looking for the toy, that means they have a basic understanding and they have the intelligence of a one- to two-year-old child. Uh, other cats may not understand where the toy has gone after it disappeared. And then there are the other cats that might just completely forgot you even showed them the toy in the first place once you hide it. And yeah, they're like, the, they're the duds. The bottom end cat. Yes. Yeah. So the homework I gave you, because you have two cats and you you definitely favour one of your cats. You have mm. cats Walter and Jesse, right? Yep, yep. Uh, definitely favour Walter. Yeah. I did say to you before that uh, Jesse, my money would be on Jesse to win. Uh, he's yeah. the smarter so you, cat you, for you, sure. You, you, you poke fun at Jesse all the time. I said I wanted to be Team Jesse. And then as we got on air, you took Team Jesse. So I got stuck with with Walter, the cat I don't care for. I told you. I told you that Walter has other perks in his intelligence. He's I more, don't care he's about more, his perks. He's more emotionally intelligent as a cat. The other one, you know, is uh, Jesse. You know, he's probably more smart in this sort of category. Jesse's but... like the freedom fighter of your two cats. <laughs> he's standing up for what's right for cats, where Walter just seems like he's just like not a care in the world. He's really do- around, does nothing. He's really docile for sure. Is that's the, one way of putting he's it. He's the hippie of the two for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it is funny that when we did that segment yesterday because I thought it was just a bit stupid and I couldn't really be bothered doing the experiment to be honest. Oh, right. Um, so did you do the homework again? I did, I did do it, but okay. like I just thought it was funny that a lot of people, my parents even said, oh, when are you doing the experiment? Well, I want to see what happens. I was like, <laughs> why do people care that much? Then I got a message from Steph who's covering Drive here at Fresh uh, for a little bit. She messaged me and she's like, oh, so what happened with the cats? So people are on the edge of their seats to find out if, I'm this, on the edge. if this experiment actually works. Now, I will say there are a few scientific outliers to say that maybe the results were a bit skewed. The temperature was hot, so the cats are just generally a bit lazier. Yeah, it was very hot yesterday. It was hot. Hottest capital city in the world yesterday here in Adelaide, 41.2 degrees. That's it, so you have to keep that in mind. Uh, So I did the experiment, grabbed the toy, shook it in front of them, put it under the box. Mm -hmm. Now my scientific discoveries uh, said that they both looked at the box. They both circled it like sharks. (laughs) For a bit, they both looked around the box. So you to tested see. them at the same time. I did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So they both looked at it at the same time, and they both literally circled the box to see if the toy was under there. So that proves that you know, I guess they have a bit of an inkling. Yeah. Jesse stayed around the box for longer. Walter gave up. <laughs> <laughs> Walter kind of just walked off after a while, didn't really care. Jesse put in a bit more, a bit, a few more minutes, but eventually didn't care either. None of them tried to get it out. Yeah, Walter had some catnip he had to get to. Yeah. <laughs> Callum, yes. we love to talk about the weather a little bit, you mm. and I. Yep. You know, it's pretty mundane chat, but whenever you do start talking about it, it is weirdly interesting. Yeah, it really crosses that line. It tiptoes between boring elevated chat to, wow, this is really interesting. I would bring it up at a dinner party. Yeah, absolutely. And some interesting facts about yesterday's weather. I mean, we hit 41.2 degrees Celsius, which is the hottest day in the city since January 24th, 2021. Yeah, right. Big gap. Yeah, and we were the hottest major city on the planet yesterday. that's nuts, because that's stat, because we have have copped that before 2014 was the last time we were the hottest city, hottest capital city in the world. Right, so 2014 and now, and it really blows my mind, because you do think, you know, what about your Dubai's and stuff that is surely hotter, you know, more regularly throughout the year. But I had a look before. Dubai yesterday was only 26 degrees. Yeah, right. So, yeah, a few lies over there. <laughs> <laughs> Making the illusion that you're always in the scorching hot. It's pretty temperate, actually. Yeah, it's pretty nice. Uh, uh, but, yes, yesterday, so hot, 41.2 yes. degrees. And here at Fresh, there were a lot of people that... um straight up just didn't come to work. Mm, yeah. Right? Honestly... Uh, Bit of a skeleton crew. It started off with a lot of people not coming and then it proceeded to a lot of people leaving. leaving. Yeah, leaving very early yeah. uh, yesterday. Uh, we were... we The two of us were two of the, the last people yeah. to leave this office. Yeah, absolute troopers. We, yeah, absolutely. That's you what know, I... Working hard. Not like we're doing nothing and no. just hanging around. <laughs> <laughs> On beanbags. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and it's funny as well because a few people left early, uh, earlier than us, Tom, and I did exclaim. I was like, what 
the hell? We're in an air-conditioned building, you know. It's not the worst thing in the world. You have all the traders out there, mm. you know, on the work side. It's a hell of a lot hotter, so just uh, bear through it. But, yes, we, ha- we did have a few people leaving the studio here. So what I want to do here is open up the text line, 0428-927-927, and find out... Was there anyone else that just didn't go to work yesterday? Yeah. Did you not go to work? Did you clock off early? What happened? Did you pull a sickie? Did you did you just end up saying, nah, you know what, I'm not going in. I'm going to I'm gonna take some annual leave today. Because <laughs> there was a bit of a crew yesterday that at around, you know, 1 p.m. or so thought, hey, let's go to the pub for lunch. And, yeah. Um, you know, it after kinda... that, that's when it dwindled off after uh, the pub. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a game changer, isn't it? Once you go to the pub... Halfway through work, I think uh, it really is tough to go back. And, you know, we <laughs> fell into that trap as well a little bit. Yeah, as much as bit. we do claim we are troopers, and we are, yeah. we, we held out longer than most people. Uh, the pub really took a knocking to us. I was in a bit of a food coma when we got back, to be honest. That's uh, why I didn't leave straight away. You can't do too let, much. <laughs> yeah. I had to let it settle. <laughs> That's why I gave off the illusion that I was yeah. still working late hours. I was just uh, trying to process my meal. I would have been dangerous on the roads driving yeah. home. I was too sleepy. <laughs> it was for the safety of others that <laughs> yeah. I stayed at work. <laughs> Did anyone else just not go to work yesterday? Tom, we got this text here. If you stay, go home early and you work in an air-conditioned workspace, you are weak. <laughs> yeah, what I mean, just... <laughs> hit the nail on the head there. Obviously, they haven't considered the fly epidemic that's going on in the station here. <laughs> Someone else has texted in here. Our air conditioner broke, so our boss let us call it a day. He's resigned and gone in a week, so he couldn't care less. It was a great day to be me. Hey, sounds like a loose boss, doesn't it? Yeah, you'd hope they're sticking around, not yeah. resigning. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like yeah, it sounds like a trooper you'd want to keep on. This one here. Yesterday is a prime example of why I bank up so much sick leave. Hung out poolside all day. Not very bad. nice. Yeah, very nah, nice. Very jealous here. Hey, somebody else has texted in here. Uh heat doesn't mean anything. Just get out on the site earlier. Five AM start, you'll be fine. End with a beer. Lol. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. If you need yeah. to do the work earlier, just get out there. This one here as well. I set timed emails. This one seems a bit strategic. I sent timed emails so they'd send throughout the day. So it looked like I was doing work and working hard. Then called the boss, said I had car troubles because of the heat, and drove straight to the beach. Jeez, that's a real MacGyver move. Hey, Callum, <laughs> I've just got a text come through. I don't know if you've seen this, uh, but if someone has texted in admitting to their, their woes, their troubles, mm. the plum that you said yes. was left in the studio. The text has come in of who's left the plum. Yeah. Do you want to read it? it out? Do you want to do the uh, honours? I'll get it up. Hang on, I closed oh, it. It was from Davo. Davo left the Jeez, plum. Jeez, Davo's the plum <laughs> bandit. She was here last week. No wonder it's rotten. No wonder it's leaving the flies around. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.